Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We're going to be solving question 33 from the first chapter of the Beer and Johnson textbook. And we have this centric load P that is applied to the granite block. As we can see, we know that the resulting maximum value of the shearing stress in the block is 2.5 KSI. So the first given that we have is the maximum of the shearing stress, which is 2.5 KSI. In the A part, we need to find the magnitude of P and in the B part, the orientation of the surface on which the maximum shearing stress occurs. And in the C part, we, we need to find the normal stress exerted on the surface. And in the last part, we have to find the maximum value of the normal stress in the block. So obviously, first of all, if we want to find the magnitude of P for the A part, we have to find the orientation on which the maximum shearing stress occurs and we know if we found that we know the value of that is this but obviously in this condition when we have p perpendicular to the surface there is no shearing force so there is no shearing stress and uh, let's figure out the orientation first then that way we can find the the parts that the question is asking us so Let's consider that our surface is making an angle of theta with horizontal and we have this force P perpendicular to it. So if you want to find the perpendicular and parallel component to the surface that we have in here, this will be our perpendicular force and this would be the force parallel to it. So basically we are dissolving P into two components one perpendicular and one parallel to the surface uh, that we have now so if that angle is theta this angle right here is theta 2 so the perpendicular component would be p cosine of theta and the parallel one would be p sine of theta and the reason that angle is theta is because when we have two angles like this and each of them are perpendicular to the other one, this one to this, and this one to this, these two will be the same. And what we have in here is basically these two. So we have these two and these two, which is exactly what we have in here. So they're both theta. All right, now that we have a perpendicular and parallel force to that surface, uh, we have to figure out when does that maximum shearing stress happen so let's figure out how we can find the shear stress first so we have the shearing stress is equal to the parallel force that we have in here which is p sine of theta and the surface that we have is a different surface we can call this surface perpendicular to p a which is what we have in here but what we are interested in is the surface that i'm highlighting in red which we can call it a prime and we can find the relationship between a and a prime if we look at this right triangle that we have in here since we are interested in the relationship between a and a prime if we just do the cosine of theta we basically have the adjacent which is a over the hypotenuse or a prime so here we can find the relationship between a prime and a will be a over cosine of theta so the reason i found a prime is that in our shearing stress the surface that we have in the denominator of this ratio would be our a prime which we figure out is a over cosine of theta so the cosine can go to the top of the ratio and we're going to get p sine of theta times sine of theta over a and now we have to figure out when does this shearing stress will be maximum and for that we can do the derivative of shearing stress over theta that way we can find the angle that actually this maximum shearing stress happened and if we find the derivative and have it equal to zero we should be able to find the theta and we should be good to go so how are we going to find this so we have sine of theta cosine of theta we know sine of 
let's just write it down in here as a flashback so we know sine of 2 theta would be 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta from trigonometry so basically sine of theta cosine of theta would be one half of sine of two theta so here what we can do is that we have sine of theta times cosine of theta uh we can keep the constant outside of this and we can do this one half of sine of two theta so now we just have to do derivative of sine of two theta which would be actually what i wrote in here we haven't done the derivative yet so that's pretty much rewriting our shearing stress and now we're going to do the derivative of shearing stress over theta which will be we have all the constants p over 2a and for sine of 2 theta we have 2 times sine of 2 theta would be cosine of 2 theta and this has to be equal to 0 these are constant values they cannot be zero so basically cosine of 2 theta has to be zero and we know cosine of 90 degrees is zero so 2 theta is basically 90 degrees or our theta is 45 degrees so when we have our theta 45 degrees that's where the maximum shearing stress happen so we can keep this in mind we don't need to do this over and over uh, i just did it in this question to to show you guys where this 45 degrees coming from so now that we know that this is going to happen in 45 degrees that's the answer for the b part of the question so let's let's find the a part of the question where we need to find the p so we figured that our maximum would be when we have so the formula that we have for sharing stress is p sine of theta times cosine of theta so p sine of 45 degrees times cosine of 45 degrees divided by a finding the a in here is pretty easy we have to find the area of this one side is six we basically have a square so six times six which will be 36 inches squared and this will be equal to the value that we have for maximum of the shearing stress 2.5 ksi and if you do this we're going to get the force in kips Keep in mind that the force in here is going to be in Kips unit. So 36 times 2.5 divided by sine of 45 times cosine of 45. We can find that value or it will be one half of sine of 2 times 45, which is so basically we have 5 times this can go up. So it will be 2.5 times 2, 5, 5 times 36. It's going to give us 180 Kips. And that would be answer for the A part of the question. So, so, so far we found a and b and we have to find the normal stress exerted on the surface and by that surface we are referring to the the surface that makes angle theta with horizontal so we are talking about the a prime in here so let's figure out that so this time we will have the normal component for normal stress we have p cosine of theta so p cosine of theta and a prime which was air over cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is going to go into the top of the ratio. So cosine squared of theta times up over a. So 180 is our p cosine squared of 45 degrees over a, which was 36. We know this value is also 0.5 since the value for sine and cosine of 45 is the same. 180 divided by 36 is 5. We have 5 times 0.5 or 2.5 KSI, which would be the answer for a C part of the question. D part, we need to find the maximum of the normal stress in here. And keep in mind that the maximum of the normal stress happens when P is perpendicular to A. So we basically have our P over the area of the A, this time just A, not A prime. And that's going to be 180 times 36, which will be 5 KSI. That's the condition that we have the maximum of the normal stress when our theta is 0 degrees. And that 0 degrees is coming actually from the same rational. Our theta, 
we found in the previous part was p cosine squared of theta over a again we have to do the derivative of normal stress over theta this time we have cosine squared of theta if we put that equal to zero we're going to get our theta is equal to zero degree which is why when we have our theta is equal to zero we get the maximum of the normal stress hope everything was clear let me know if you have any questions we're covering different textbooks on this channel feel free to check out the playlist and let me know if you want me to solve specific problem in the next videos and you guys take care i'll see you in the next one